Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I'd like to bring to your attention an incident that has been widely discussed in China in recent years. Cheng Yong, a 44-year-old entrepreneur from Changzhou, Jiangsu, was questioned by Discipline Inspection Commission for three consecutive days from November 8th to November 10th. Unfortunately, in the early morning of November 11th at 4.36 a.m., he tragically took his own life by jumping off a building. Cheng Yong leaves behind two children, a son in his senior year of high school and a daughter in the fifth grade. This incident has had a major impact in China, particularly within the business sector. Cheng Yong served as the chairman of Changzhou Hualie Hydraulic Lubrication Equipment Corporation. The company, with fixed assets amounting to 200 million yuan, employs 450 individuals and holds considerable influence in its industry. On November 11, the Changzhou Huali Hydraulic Lubrication Equipment Corporation released a statement on their WeChat official account titled, Respected Entrepreneur Forced to Jump to Prove Innocence. The statement stated, on November 11, 2023, at 4.36 a.m., Cheng Yong, the chairman of the company, was coerced into confession to accepting an 8 million yuan bribe in deposit and cash. He met a tragic end by jumping to his death while asserting his innocence. Over four decades of relentless effort, guided by Chairman Cheng Yong's leadership, Changzhou Huali Hydraulic Lubrication Equipment Corporation has earned the prestigious ac accolades, including record recognition as a national specialized refined and a new small giant enterprise, a China famous trademark, a provincial high-tech enterprise, and a provincial enterprise technology center. Chairman Cheng Yong currently holds various significant social roles, such as serving on the Jiangsu Small to Medium Enterprise Council, presiding as the president of the Zheng Lu Business Association, and contributing as a member of the Tianning Industrial and Commercial Federation among other responsibilities. He has previously been honored with distinctions like the May 1st Labor Medal, Outstanding Communist Party member in the district, Top 10 Outstanding Youth in the district, and Outstanding Entrepreneur Caring for Workers in the district. Chairman Cheng Yong, in the most poignant manner, opted to prove his innocence. This represents the official statement released by the company regarding the chairman's tragic suicide, asserting that he was compelled to take such a drastic step. This statement stands as the initial source for the entire news story. Additionally, the online community has shared Cheng Yong's brief farewell letter from his WeChat moments prior to the incident. In the letter, he mentioned being questioned by the Municipal Discipline Inspection Commission about Vice District Chair Yang Kang Cheng's long matters. Cheng Yong vehemently denies taking the 8 million yuan deposit and a cash bribe from Yang. Initially intending to settle the matter quickly and depart, he unexpectedly found himself in a difficult situation. The interrogation room proved to be distressing, and perhaps due to his poor psychological resilience, the experience felt overwhelming. Facing more challenges ahead, he decided to take a step forward, bidding farewell. To all my family and friends, I apologize for not meeting your expectations and for being unable to stay with you any longer. To my employees, I express my regrets and bid you farewell. Irrespective of the spin given to public opinion and eventual official stance, the formal statement from the company and the entrepreneur's farewell letter have left us profoundly shaken and astonished. Witnessing a successful entrepreneur being driven to such extreme is distressing. Considering the widespread discussions and attentions this incident has garnered across society, what approach is the Chinese Communist Party adopting in response? 
On the evening of November 12th, the local authorities released an official statement on their WeChat account responding to Chang Yong's suicide. In light of the speculation circulating online regarding Chang Yong's suicide being linked to an interview, the municipal party committee and the government emphasized their serious concern and are now coordinating relevant departments to conduct a legal investigation. Additionally, on the same day, an official publication released an article aimed at social stability titled Changzhou Factory Second Generation Jumps to Death After Interview Smooth Growth. This piece, narrated from Cheng Yong's father's perspective, argued that Cheng Yong had a comfortable upbringing about facing, without facing significant challenges, and his inability to handle a conversation with party leaders led him to jump off the building due to poor psychological resilience. The article asserted that the responsibility did not rest with the party or the Discipline Inspection Commission. This narrative faced widespread criticism, as many netizens promptly questioned its credibility. In contrast, the factory's official statement explicitly stated that Cheng Yong was coerced into jumping, creating a stark contrast. Cheng Yong's father, who assumed control of the company after his son's death, issued a statement unequivocally pointing to the Discipline Inspection Commission's coercion as the cause of his son's forced suicide. This article, riddled with the inconsistencies and the lacking empathy, triggering, triggered a significant public outcry in China for its perceived inhumanity in portraying Zheng Cheng Yong as deserving blame a day after his death, especially under the guise of his father's perspective. Here are my perspectives on the matter. To begin with, the tragic death of entrepreneur Cheng Yong is not an isolated incident. There are numerous instances of entrepreneurs undergoing such torment, with many individuals sharing their experiences online. Numerous reports indicate the use of torture by discipline inspection officials, with specific tools and facilities at their disposal. The Discipline Inspection Commission has its designated a double regulation location and the detention centers, which are described as even more harsh and unregulated than conventional prisons. Cheng Yong's coerced demise has brought attention to many similar cases of injustice. The vast authority held by Discipline Inspection Commission and their capacity to cause the death of numerous individuals is indeed shocking. Secondly, the CCP's response to public outcry lacks a truthful and a sincere approach. The day after the widely circulated Stability Maintenance article titled Changzhou Factory Second Generation Coerced into Suicide After Talks Grow Up Smoothly, it mysteriously disappeared from the internet, indicating censorship. The CCP's attempt to control the narrative backfired due to the significant public response. However, the CCP has not taken tangible steps to conduct an investigation, signaling an intent to cover up the truth rather than disclose it publicly. Thirdly, following the forced suicide of the entrepreneur, the Chinese Communist Party not only avoid self-reflection, but instead party media crafts an insider report or investigative report. They manipulated the words of the deceased entrepreneur's father to assert that the person deserved their fate, demonstrating a severe lack of humanity. According to the CCP's reasoning, an entrepreneur should endure the humiliation and intimidation from the Discipline Inspection Committee to be considered a competent entrepreneur. This rationale is entirely devoid of humanity, reason, and morality. Fourthly, while the tragic suicide of the entrepreneur stands as an isolated incident, its repercussions are poised to eclipse all the pledges the Chinese Communist Party has made to private enterprises this year, especially those directly articulated by Xi Jinping. Back in March, Xi Jinping asserted, We consistently treat private enterprises and entrepreneurs as our own, providing support in times of difficulty and guidance in moments of confusion. 
However, in the aftermath of the entrepreneurs coerced suicide in Changzhou, numerous instances of other entrepreneurs being subjected to scrutiny and punishment have surfaced in public discourse. This has cast a shadow of doubt on Xi Jinping's assurance to entrepreneurs, painting them as insincere and misleading. Rather than the promised support and encouragement, entrepreneurs seem to encounter snares and brutality. Cheng Yong's tragic demise lays bare the falsehood of Xi Jinping and the CCP's hypocritical stance towards private entrepreneurs, and this fallout is likely to intensify. Hu Zhu Liu, a prominent economist and the founder of Chunhua Capital Group, spoke in Singapore in mid-November, highlighting a heightened fear and concern among Chinese entrepreneurs, unprecedented since 1978. This suggests a perceived regression in the business environment in China, echoing conditions from before the era of economic reform and opening up. Many netizens in China found Hu Zhu Liu's statement not overly dramatic but a realistic reflection of the current situation. Cheng Yong's tragic suicide further underscores Hu Zhu Liu's observation. The sixth point emphasizes that extortion and intimidation tactics employed by the CCP's Discipline Inspection Committee are standard practices, operating without adequate supervision. Unless the CCP decisively addresses issues related to illegal detentions, imprisonment, and intimidations, it is improbable to establish an environment where private entrepreneurs can trust, foster a legal framework, or alleviate the prevailing fear among the populace. Numerous entrepreneurs sharing first-hand experiences disclose that post-detention they not only endure physical abuse and torture, but also face extortion. Intermediaries often approach detained entrepreneurs demanding assets, and the ensuing financial transactions are intricate, making it challenging to trace back to individuals within the discipline inspection committees, a situation shrouded in darkness. Whether the Changzhou case will prompt significant changes within the CCP or merely lead to a localized investigation by the Changzhou government, resulting in minimal repercussions, remains uncertain. The final reflection concerns the location of the incident, Changzhou in Jiangsu, positioned within the Yangtze River Delta, a region relatively prosperous in terms of the market economy. Generally, entrepreneurs in such areas enjoy a more forgiving environment. There exists an unspoken understanding that practices like bribery and corruption are considered commonplace. And within the CCP's system, corruption often acts as a lubricant for economic development. If an official faces repercussions due to corruption and implicates entrepreneurs involved in bribery, typically, a brief account of the situation is enough. This differs from some other mainland provinces where the business environment may be less accommodating. The question arises, why in this particular case are the measures so stringent? especially when the central government has consistently stressed the importance of improving the business environment and advised against unnecessary arrests and harsh judgments. The only plausible explanation is that the local finances have reached a point of desperation. Typically, when local government finances are strained, the initial approach is to exert pressure on the general population, particularly those with lower incomes. If the public is financially constrained, attention may shift towards targeting business figures. The current circumstances suggest that the local government finances are so precarious that the resorting to affecting business people has become a viable option. Could this trend extend to other regions? It's a distinct possibility. When local finances are insufficient, government employees may face salary reductions and layoffs. Social welfare programs might be curtailed. And even after these measures, the financial situation may not improve. Turning to business figures then becomes a logical next step. While entrepreneurs and business contribute significantly to local tax revenues, authorities might reluctantly resort to extracting wealth from these business leaders, pushing local enterprises towards an undesirable fate. 
This development is worrisome, particularly given the limited risk resistance of China's small and medium-sized businesses. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.